A violent chain reaction crash involving a Long Beach City bus that slammed into a building will show you the moment of impact. Plus, when you can score some free donuts. I like free donuts. <laughs> Hello, everyone. You're watching The Rundown. I'm Robin Winston. Surveillance video shows a silver car run a stop sign. Then a Long Beach Transit bus slams right into the car. Both end up in the side of the bougie crap restaurant at the intersection of South and California streets. A closer look at the crash actually shows the car going airborne shortly before it collided with the bus. 14 people were injured in Thursday's crash. 10 of them were taken to the hospital. SAG AFTRA'S BOARD OF DIRECTORS IS REVIEWING THEIR NEW DEAL WITH THE MAJOR HOLLYWOOD STUDIOS TO DECIDE WHETHER TO SEND IT TO MEMBERS FOR RATIFICATION. THE GROUP THAT REPRESENTS THE STUDIO SAYS THE DEAL REPRESENTS, QUOTE, A NEW PARADIGM, INCLUDING THE LARGEST INCREASE IN WAGES IN 40 YEARS, A NEW RESIDUAL COMPENSATION STRUCTURE FOR STREAMING PROGRAMS AND EXTENSIVE AI PROTECTIONS. Orange County is now under a state of emergency after Tuesday's historic hangar fire. The concern is over asbestos detected in debris and ash still in the air. Public parks are closed and the city's weekend Veterans Day activities were canceled. The emergency declaration allows the county to request more resources to help with the cleanup and assist with air quality. In the meantime, residents are being encouraged to stay indoors, but if you have to go outside, you are urged to wear a mask to try and prevent all that gunk from getting in your lungs. Public schools in Tustin were closed Thursday, but some parents say officials did not act soon enough. They told the, the parents that they would keep the kids inside. They didn't. They had them outside. The kids are sitting on the blacktop when there's a debris and asbestos for it that's there. The kids have been breathing this stuff. The agency says additional samples collected at the fire scene showed the presence of heavy metals, including lead, arsenic, and nickel. All right, let's check in with meteorologist Belinda De Leon, who's tracking some changes in your forecast. Hey, Robin, I know you're ready for the weekend. I am too. The weather will be nice overall, quiet. It's not going to be as windy, but it'll still be dry. Temperatures will be warming into the 80s. Then next week, you're going to have to pay close attention to the forecast because we have big changes. There's going to be a gradual cool down and the chance for rain Wednesday through possibly Friday. Now, here's the weather as we head into the weekend in Riverside, 78 Friday, sunny over the weekend, 81 on Saturday and Sunday. It's looking like our warmest day. This is the warm before the storm. Early next week, our skies become cloudy, our temperatures start to cool, and the First Alert weather team is tracking what could be our first winter storm of the season. The chance for rain from the middle to the end of the week, temperatures coming down to the 60s, gusty winds, high surf. Now we are still several days away. There are lots of details that are a little fuzzy, so stay tuned for more updates. Investigators are still hoping to find video of the confrontation at a rally that ultimately led to the death of a Jewish man. The Ventura County Sheriff's Office says they have photos and videos before and after, but nothing of the actual incident. As a result, there have been no arrests. The man involved in the confrontation with Paul Kessler at the rally is cooperating with detectives. Kessler died from a head injury as a result from a fall. The 69-year-old's death was ruled a homicide, but that by itself does not suggest any wrongdoing. If you have video recording equipment in your car and we're driving in the area of Westlake Boulevard in Thousand Oaks on Sunday, investigators want to hear from you. The LAPD continues to search for three members of a missing Tarzana family. Their disappearance is believed to be connected to the body parts found in an Encino dumpster on Wednesday. May Haskell and her parents are missing, but police say her three children are safe. Detectives completed the search of their home where they say they found blood and other evidence of a crime scene. May's husband, Sam Haskell, has been booked on suspicion of murder. Neighbors tell us he kept to himself. I never talked to him once. I just saw him. Um, he wouldn't speak. He was just not friendly. Like most neighbors are friendly. You want to say hi, talk about what you do for a living, and et cetera, et cetera. And he was not a difficult person, don't get me wrong, but he just wasn't friendly. Police are working to determine the identity of the body found in the dumpster. The driver who crashed into a group of sheriff's cadets is now facing serious charges, including vehicular manslaughter. The crash happened a year ago in Whittier. Surveillance video captured the moment the driver ran right into the recruits as they jogged in a neighborhood. 25 recruits were injured, and one of them, 27-year-old Alejandro Martinez, died from his injuries. He fought, and I'm telling you, he fought for eight months. 
uh, in a hospital bed with his family by his side. Sheriff Robert Luna said several other recruits are still recovering from their injuries, and for many, the crash ended their careers in law enforcement. NBC4's Colleen Williams talked to the driver, Nicholas Gutierrez, after the crash, and he insists it was a horrible accident and says he fell asleep at the wheel. If convicted, he could face up to 12 years in prison. It's Medicare open enrollment season, and for many, sorting through the different plans can be confusing. As one Chino woman learned, that confusion can lead to thousands of dollars in bills. The I-Team helped her clear things up, and we also have some important tips to help you choose the right plan. Come on! Michelina Jack had a workplace injury a few years ago. I broke both my ankles. I tore my knee. Um, broke my back. She's now on permanent disability and Medicare. Nine surgeries later, she knows having the right Medicare plan is critical. She chose Aetna Advantage. Looking at their plan and what they offered, the doctors that I had or were interested in seeing we're going to be covered under Aetna Medicare. Michelina recently had three knee procedures for pain relief, but first she called Aetna to confirm the procedures were covered. She says she was told yes, but afterward, Aetna denied the claim, saying the procedures weren't covered under her plan, and Michelina was now on the hook for the bill, which she says was nearly $15,000. That's dipping into savings. That's dipping into retirement. That's borderline, am I going to make my mortgage payment? The I-Team reached out to Aetna. It said it initially gave Michelina wrong information. The procedure should never have been covered. But because of its mistake, it paid her claims. Michelina opted for a Medicare Advantage plan. But there are a lot of decisions to make when it comes to coverage. And figuring out the best option can be tricky. I have literally trained rocket scientists from J at JPL who have the same questions as everyone else. It does not matter what anyone's educational background is. Medicare is so confusing. Stephanie Fahuri is with the nonprofit Center for Healthcare Rights. She helps Medicare recipients navigate plans and choose what's right for them. She says there's no best plan and no one size fits all. Sometimes even spouses will have two different types of Medicare coverage because of the prescriptions that they're taking or because of the specialists or doctors that one or the other needs to maintain. Fahuri's number one piece of advice, before you enroll in a plan, make sure your doctor doctor and hospital accept it and be sure to confirm this every year. Because the last thing anyone wants is to join a plan or change their coverage only to learn that they can no longer see the specialist that's been treating them for 20 years for their diabetes. As for Michelina, she says she might switch plans. She says the emotional pain of getting an approval then denial made her physical pain even worse. I wanted to be pain free and to be there for the family here in the present for them. I'm not messed up here because I'm in so much pain. Medicare open enrollment ends December 7th. If you'd like free help from the Center for Healthcare Rights, we'll have that information on our website, NBCLA.com. Apple has agreed to pay up to $25 million to settle claims over hiring discrimination. The Department of Justice says more than $18 million will go to affected victims. The remaining money will go to civil penalties. The agency found that Apple violated the Immigration and Nationality Act when it hired foreign workers and failed to advertise those openings on its website, among other offenses. Apple denies any wrongdoing, but it says it has created a new plan. The SAG after strike may be over, but it will impact upcoming movie releases. Disney says it's delaying the third Deadpool movie, originally set to hit theaters in May. It will now be pushed to July. The fourth Captain America movie will be moved from July to February of 2025. The Lion King prequel is sliding from next July to December. And two other untitled films have been removed from the company's calendar. Other studios are also shifting films around. Krispy Kreme is giving away free donuts on Monday to celebrate World Kindness Day. The first 500 customers who stop by a participating shop will get a dozen glazed donuts for free. A spokesperson says they hope it will inspire more acts of kindness. Krispy Kreme also thanking veterans on Veterans Day by giving all vets and active duty military personnel a free donut and cup of coffee. Some of the most well-known childhood classics are coming to life in SoCal. The Dr. Seuss experience leaps off the page and into Santa Monica Place. This is an interactive experience that brings some of Dr. Seuss's most well-loved books to life, including The Cat in the Hat, 
the Lorax, and Horton Hears a Who. Each world has different things that the whole family can discover. That's something fun to check out. It was a jam-packed day in Universal Studios Hollywood as the 18th annual Day of Giving got underway. The event is for children who might not otherwise have a chance to visit the theme park. The kids received an assortment of new clothes, school supplies, and other items. They also got to visit our new Super Nintendo World. I'm looking forward to see the Super Mario ride and um, Harry Potter. It's really important to us to serve, uh, you know, part of our goal through our nonprofit called Discover Star is to really serve uh, those less fortunate, especially in our community and especially uh, around causes of homelessness and children's causes. Ah, what a great program, and I saw some smiling faces out there. Day of Giving is an annual Universal Studios Hollywood event. The theme park and NBC4 are both owned by our parent corporation, Comcast. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays from 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with traffic reports throughout the morning commute. I'll see you next time on The Rundown.